What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel where we talk about sneaker streetwear music and everything in between. I'm your host Icarus, welcome back to the show. I appreciate you guys stopping by so don't forget to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe for more content in the near future. With that out of the way, let's get to it man. So in this video, I actually want to show you guys this pickup of mine from a few months ago that I only received just a few days back. A huge shout out by the way to the delivery and of course my boy Papa Cody Jody for handling my items while I'm away from the city of Manila. And I'm pretty stoked on how it turned out because I actually bought a used pair of sneakers and I got the time to, you know, clean it, buff out the creases and of course de-yellow its soles. And it's really, really looking clean. Anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get into the box. It's the standard Air Jordan 1 box, nothing too, too special. And as the size tag would read, Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG, Gym Red, Black, White, Photo Blue. And as you pop the box open, you get the tissue, and then you get the sneakers. And here we go. Folks, this is the Air Jordan 1 origin story. Now, I know, I know, this is old news already when it comes to this fast-paced sneaker world, but this to me is a personal grail, having Spider-Man, one of my favorite characters growing up, and is still relevant today knowing that another Spider-Man movie might be coming out by the end of this year. Anyway, this pair released back in December 2018 to coincide with the Spider-Man movie by Sony, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and limited pairs was released with special boxes, while ordinary pairs such as mine did come in ordinary standard boxes. And as you would watch the movie, the main character, Miles Morales, actually wore a pair of Jordan 1 Chicago's in his overall character design. Kind of like this, but not exactly. And it's an amazing movie talking about soul searching, individuality. It's a coming of age story as well with an amazing art style. I highly, highly suggest you guys check out Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Well, enough about the movie, let's talk sneakers. Starting things off with the upper, you have this really nice thick tumbled leather for the majority of the uppers, red tumbled leathers from the toe guard, eyelets, heel guard as well as the wing collar of the sneaker with the Air Jordan Wings logo embossed in black. And I gotta say the leather they used on this pair right here is really really soft to the touch. Jordan brand really knocked it out of the park when it comes to the overall quality of like previous releases such as the origin stories. Now some Jordans nowadays are really hit or miss when it comes to craftsmanship and quality. You can even see the raw edges of the leather and it outlines the red overlays of the sneaker very well. And that gives the leather a lot more depth and thickness to it. And now moving onto the accent everyone was talking about back in 2018 and that's the overall 3M accent of Kirby Crackle or Kirby Dots in the red overlays of the sneaker. I did read somewhere that this was called halftone. Basically, it's a method where graphic designers use so that limited color would appear to have more detail or shading by just using black or colored dots. And that to me really speaks out when it comes to this collaboration because it really mimics that comic book aesthetic of the sneaker. Now, still on the upper of the sneaker, you have this really nice white tumbled leather for the toe box, lateral and medial side. And this leather right here on the toe box didn't look like this as you're seeing on the camera. As I've mentioned before, I did buy a used pair of sneakers. So with my pair, I actually got a chance to do the ironing method when it comes to buffing out the creases. Now, for those who aren't familiar, the ironing method is a sneaker hack of some sorts that allows you to buff out the creases on used sneakers. Basically, what you do is you stuff the toe box with a cloth up to the point where the creased leather is stretched and then you take the damp cloth, preferably an old white t-shirt, and then place it over the creased area and then iron out the creased portion of your sneaker. Again, do proceed with caution when doing the ironing method and don't play around with the iron too long because it actually might burn your sneaker. Again, do proceed with caution when doing the ironing method. Now, moving back to the sneaker, you do have a different material used on the black areas of the shoe 
specifically here on the swoosh and on the ankle area. Basically, it's this hexagonal textured rubber or leather. It kind of reminds me a lot of superhero suits on how they molded it out. And it fits perfectly on the aesthetic of this shoe. And it's a really great addition to the overall silhouette. Again, it really adds to that Spider-Man theme. And to top it off, another feature that makes it stand out from the Chicago colorway is its icy outsole. Yes, I know it's not as icy as a brand new pair because again, this is a used pair probably because of the age and the usage. But hear me out, it didn't come as icy as this when I first got this sneaker. I'll take it to the B-roll because I actually had a chance to de-yellow these soles myself. Now for the de-yellowing process or the whitening process, now as soon as I got the sneaker, I scrubbed it down, took a deep clean myself using my Clyde Premium Cleaner with the hard bristle brush for the outsoles and the soft bristle brush for the uppers. And yes, I even cleaned the insides because I really want to disinfect the sneaker as much as I can. And yes, I did scrub the outsole and I know it's unnecessary because again, I'm going to be wearing the heck out of the shoe. But I really want to test this sneaker hack out because who knows, you might actually de-yellow your own used sneakers at the comfort of your home and for cheap. So right after I dried my sneaker as well as the outsole, I applied some Bremod oxidizing cream. Basically, it's a conditioner equivalent to Salon Care 40 for those who aren't familiar. And correct me if I'm wrong, but they use this as some sort of hair bleach when it comes to coloring your hair. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. So what I did was I applied this hair bleach of some sorts thoroughly with a toothbrush right over the soles and then used cling wrap to keep it in place. Right after that, I took it under the sun for roughly three hours. Why three hours? Because I have this paranoia that if I cook it for way too long, it might ruin my sneaker or it might ruin the outsole. So I'm not taking any chances. Three hours it is. Right after that, I took the cling wrap off and washed that conditioner off using that Clyde solution and water. I scrubbed it thoroughly and then did that whole process again the next day just to see if there's a difference when it comes to the de-yellowing process. And surprisingly, it actually worked right after the second session. You can actually see that it's a lot lighter than before. Now, I didn't go for the full icy treatment on both of my pairs because it's not gonna matter anyway when it comes to icy sold sneakers because it's gonna yellow anyway. But it's comforting to know that you can resurrect a pair of yellowed out soles with just a 30 peso product from your local market at the comfort of your home. Now to wrap things up, this sneaker did have that blue accent sprinkled here and there to give off that Spider-Man theme, starting things off from the outsole as well as the tongue tab right here. You have that standard white nylon Jordan 1 tongue, but with a saturated blue tab with Nike Air in red stitching, as well as that insole in that saturated blue with Nike Air branding printed in red. Again, mine's a used pair, so that Nike Air must have been rubbed out after multiple uses. And of course, as for lacing, the Jordan 1 origin story does come in default flat black laces, but with red aglets. But if you want a look that really pops, you can switch out the default laces with some extra red laces with blue aglets. Again, completing that Spider-Man theme. Now as for sizing and fit, the Jordan 1 origin story does seem to fit true to size as I am a true size 12. Nike and Jordan brand has been consistent with their sizing department. So again, whatever you typically wear on your Jordans, I suggest you stick to it. Again, for me, it's true to size. Now what's crazy is I got this sneaker for a steal, knowing that it sold for the same price like way back then. Like as soon as it first released for roughly around 13K to 15K, around $250. Not a lot of people were really into it back then, but to me, I was heavily invested on this sneaker. Again, because of the background and of course that whole collaboration thing with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. But being a new sneaker head back in that time, I was still iffy about, you know, paying resale for a pair of Jordans. But then after a few months passed, it went up in value for around $300 and then $350. And then soon after that, The Last Dance came and then blew this whole Jordan craze right over. And a dead stock pair of Origin ones in my size would probably go for $700 in the aftermarket right now. And that's crazy. And that speaks volume to all you young sneakerheads out there. It's okay to buy used sneakers when it comes to building your collection, knowing that you can do what I did, you know? 
deep clean your pair, buff out those creases, de-yellow those soles, and then sooner or later, you're gonna be having a piece of your own personal grail right up your shelf. Plus, it's a huge favor to the environment and your wallets knowing that you can grow your collection just by bringing these sneakers back into life. From a dirty $250 shoe, right up to a cleaned up, crispy $400 sneaker. Let's think about that. And that's my story on my personal grail. Well, that's it about me, man. How about you guys? Leave a comment down below and let me know what are some of your personal grails or what are your thoughts on the Jordan 1 origin stories down below in the comments or what are some of the used sneakers you actually bought for your collection? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Always appreciate you guys stopping by. Again, a huge, huge thank you for the support on our latest episode of Beyond the Hype. Again, feel free to check it out down in the description or the playlist in my channel. Feel free to check out our channels that Street by Danny, Seth on Air, The Jello Beef, and Edward Ken23. And watch out for our latest episode coming up by the end of the month. Again, that's beyond the hype. Like, comment, subscribe. Check me out on Instagram at rural.icarus right here for more sneaker, streetwear, and music-related content right here on the channel. I am Micarus, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. I'm actually really excited on the next Spider-Man movie, and that's gonna be Spider-Man No Way Home, right? Spider-Man No Way Home? Yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home. This, Spider-Man Finally Home, man. Spider-Man finally home.